My blog is a reflection and expression of my own taste. That's the difference between writing a blog and writing for a magazine. My blog is really who I am. It gives me the freedom to include only what I really love. I seek to allow my readers not only to follow the train of my own thought, but also to make them look at design in a way they might have not done before. Nick Kellner has taught me a lot about how to look at design because he thinks like historian. His interiors are informed by his passion and deep knowledge in the history of design and architecture, and also by his keen eye for great objects. Nick started his career in the London's legendary antique house of Mallet, and this is where he developed an expertise in the world of furniture. With the rise of interest in 20th century design, he has developed an expertise in mid-century Italian furniture and lighting, and also in objects of historical significance, which he currently presents in his jeweled and highly specialized gallery in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Nick, in this interior, the objects shape the identity of the space. What's the role of the object in your interiors? Well, I came to interior design uh, via a career as a dealer. Um, and that's really how I came to know most of my clients and certainly this client. Very effective way of making an interior unique and a unique reflection of that client is through the object. And the more extraordinary, the more fascinating the objects, the more fascinating the interior. You have developed a special expertise for, I would say, objects that have significant historical biographies. And so what is the, how, how does the client benefit from living with this type of objects? There are two aspects to, two aspects to that answer. First and foremost, the pleasure that you'll take from interacting with that object is a different level to living with a work of art in that you're interacting with a truly important piece of design on a daily basis. You live with it throughout your life. Second aspect, and the most important essentially is the value of the objects accrue as you as you own them. These things, if bought correctly, will increase in value. The interior you created here is clearly personal and sophisticated. What was the role of the client? The client has an incredible art collection. Uh, and the first discussion began with the installation of the McCracken monolith that you can see behind me. That was the first piece that we really built the collection around. This is one of my favorite pieces of foreign art. I couldn't agree with you more. Why? Fantastic Why? object. What, what do you like about it? Well, it belies the material. It, 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 the the ribbon-like shape of the thing seems so light, so delicate. Yes, this is a vast, extremely heavy piece of steel, but he treats it with such elegance and refinement that he's created this magnificent. You have a special love for Osvaldo Borsani. I absolutely do. Why? He's really exceptional and it, it, it's I think one of the great and sort of underexposed uh, potential areas of, of Italian design collecting. Here's the Borsani cabinet. Your favorite designer. But what makes it special are the handles. Yep, this, uh, the bronze handles are actually by Lucio Fontana. And it's um, little known that Borsani and Fontana were very close friends and frequent collaborators. 
my favorite. Oh, Cheers. they're fantastic. This is the Due Pew chair by Nanda Vigo. And I think Nanda Vigo is one of the great names of uh, 20th century design. This is, Mo well, no, I think this is Mongolian lamb, but either in um, lamb fur, long haired lamb or goat fur, Cadassia, for example. I can have you. I find this space extraordinary, uh, and it doesn't look like it was made as a home. Well, what's the history of this apartment? Uh, this was the wool club. This was the private club for the members of the wool trade. Uh, there were dining rooms up here, and this was where they would come and be entertained. And we've kept, blissfully, a lot of the original details, the panelling in the rotunda, the original mosaic floor, much of the original detail is still here. The building um, has been through various iterations since then. Uh, Tribeca fell in and out of favour as a glamorous neighbourhood throughout the years. The wonderful images of the rotunda from the uh, 1970s, early 80s, when uh, this room was used as a rehearsal room for uh, an acrobatic troupe that used to perform in Studio 54 back in the 80s. And there was actually a, a, a Keith Herring mural found behind one of the walls during a renovation. So the, the buildings had a really fascinating history. There's so much, one of the wonderful things about New York is this history, is, is these older panelled rotunda. The 20th century was a, an incredible, the early 20th century was an incredible time to be in America, an incredible time of change, an incredible time of progress, and there were incredible buildings built and those histories are still here and visible but very many of them are behind closed doors. So.